How y'all doing? Um, a while back, I presented miniatures from a game from Grenadier Miniatures uh, from 1993, that is Dragon Lords. The, for those of you who don't know, Dragon Lords is a game where you play on a hex map and you have dragons in a flying position on flying bases and you um, try to attack each other and fight. And, you know, it's basically battle tech using dragons. There's even an option of additional riders to put on top of it, like a uh, you know arrow, uh, bow and arrow, javelin, uh, crossbowman, or a um, wizard knight, that sort of thing. And um, you know, it was a very simple idea. If you play BattleTech, you could easily play this one, but it never caught on because there's not much variety other than the basis of what uh, this is. Now this box set had, um, which what I bought unopened, had five dragons to put together and play. I even had, knew about, and because I knew about this um, game years ago, because a friend of mine gave me um, a little dragon from a blister pack, you know, um, you know, that's how I got to know this game, that's what started me to look for it and see what else was out there. So I got this box game and I got the, I um, uh, and painted all the miniatures of that, so it was six miniatures, five from this and one I had already. But thanks to places like eBay, I went ahead and expanded it um, by buying 11 more blister packs. Each blister pack comes with two of the same dragon in it, um, so you get like one day, you know, one, two brass dragons in a pack, two diamond, that sort of thing. So I found 11 of them, I purchased them through uh, two or three spots, and I decided to paint them all right here. And I'm going to show you how I, I prepared them for, and um, prepared them, and how I get to paint up, and now so show a slideshow of, of of the results. So let's talk about how I prepared them first. So as I said. Um, I expanded the Dragon Lords miniatures set by buying these little blisters here. Each blister has one type of dragon in it, but you get two per pack. So you got two bodies, two sets of wings, and flying bases. So you have two complete dragons to go with your game. And I bought 11 packs, as you can see here, giving me a total of 22 dragons I'm going to be showing here um, when they're um, that are fully painted. Now, as I was assembling this and pre prepping them, filing them down, I came across a problem. One set did not have wings. As you can see from here, this is the skeletal dragons. And as you can see, I had one set of wings to go with it, but I didn't have the other set of wings you know, for the other one. This is a bit of a problem. Okay, now, um, now I need to do some conversion. Um, I don't have anything on hand. These are, these miniatures are way out of print, so I, you know, it'll be hard to find. So I looked around, and on the website Macari, I found this. This is a set of wings from another Grenadier miniature, not relating to Dragon Lords. But it was at the right size based on the picture here, so I bought it, you know, at a very nice price for it. It's made of ledge, that's why it's so dark. But the wings are, have a bony uh, fingers on it, so I figured it'd be a nice match, you know, just no holes in the wings. And a little bit of filing and, you know, working around with it, I put it all together as you can see here. So that gives me 22 complete dragons. The next thing I did is I had to prep them for painting. So what I did is I um, blew little toothpicks on it. And when that sets, I put them on these little foam handles I um, had from um, uh, figure trays where you just pop the, um, the foam sections out. So I was able to make some makeshift handles and I can twirl it as I want, um, as I want. I don't painting on it without touching too much of the miniature. Um, and now they're, and again, primed up with white and now they're ready to go. Also, something you should know about putting the wings onto the bodies. Uh, these miniatures are, you know, were made at a time where everything was handcrafted. And today, with 3D modeling, you could do before you could make all the, um, the, you know, the multi-part bits fit well interchangeably. Not so much with these. These will have um, the dragon bodies will have different groove shapes, and the wings, you know, not only have different designs, they also have different. Um, um, notches to put them in. So you will find out as you put these together they don't all fit right. So obviously you got to do is a lot of filing to make sure to even fit at a decent level and you may still find gaps or even holes when you, you know even if you do get, do get it flushed where it looks seamless on the outside. So one of the things I did on a few of them is I took some milliput or green stuff and took a little bit of that and just stuffed it in that spot and pressed the wings down into it to where you know and it will squeeze out you could shape you know shave it off and shape it and you know and to where it looks seamless when it sets you may want it because um at least with the, my experience with milliput it doesn't act like a glue so it may the wings may just fall off so you may want to carefully take them off and glue the milliput and the metals together so it all stays firm and hold so that's uh, with that said. 
Now, in addition to the ones you know that I've collected here, I chose um, four of the dragons and put little writers on it. In the base game, you have a, a sprue with um, uh, various humans on a six millimeter scale. You can put on top of dragons for additional rules. You can get a, a lancer, you can get a wizard, a javelin, a crossbow, and you know, you know, like five different types to put on there to give you extra range attacks or magical abilities which are potent or with the, the knight with a lance, you know, has close combat specialties to do more damage to your opponents. So I chose, I chose four of them to have little riders onto it. Now, with that said, here is a slideshow showing all 22 miniatures here. But before I do, I'm going to make a statement here. Not so much bragging, I just want to see who else is out here. I probably have, you know, with this video, the largest collection of Dragon Lords miniatures in addition to and having them all fully painted so I could potentially play a game with this. So with the 22 presented here plus the six I had before, so that's, you know, um, that's what, 28? And so I have 28 miniatures belonging to this game and fully painted, ready to play. I would just want to say to see if there's anyone else out there who's collected this and put them all together. And, and so just so I'm not the only one. So I'm making a statement now. I'm willing to have anybody come to me and say, hey, I got a collection of this too. And, and please provide a link to pictures or oh, videos. So, you know, you're not just saying it. I'm not going to take your word for it in the comments. And so with that said, so. With that, here are the miniatures, um, and, and um, yeah, this looks like a fun little game, but I'm understanding, as I said before, I can understand why this game never caught on, you know, compared to Battletech, even though they use the same rules. Battletech, you can make mechs and have all sorts of configurations, all different designs, weights, and everything, and it's very in-depth. This one, okay, we have dragons of various sizes, that gives them different stats, limited number of breath weapons, put little riders, not much you can go with that. So maybe you could take a concept like this and uh, expand on that a little bit with our flying creatures and make it to where it's a game by itself or integrate it with other role-playing games that you're into. So something to think about there. So well, with that said, here's my slideshow here. Uh, thank you all for watching. You have a nice day.